Hello everyone, Jolene here from Bookworm Adventure Girl. Welcome to another Tag Tuesday. I haven't done a tag in so long, and today I'm going to be doing the book recommendation tag, which was originally created by Steph Borer, and I was kindly tagged several months ago now by Juan from Just One Reader, and I am very excited to be getting to this after so long. Um, I will leave links to Steph and Juan's channels below in the description box as well. Um, and I'll put their tag videos so you can go and check those out. Uh, the prompts or questions are pretty easy. They are asking for book recommendations, which is something that we do all the time here on BookTube. So I think this will be fairly painless. Uh, so let's start with the first prompt which is a book you tell people is your favorite. I have a few that fit this, but I am going to say A Prayer for Owen Meany by John Irving. It is easily one of my favorite books of all time. I love the characters. I love the story. I love the writing. I love everything about this book. So if you haven't had a chance to read it uh, yet, then I highly, highly recommend this one. Number two is a book that is your guilty pleasure. Okay, this one is a little harder for me. I don't, I don't know that I have anything for this. The first thing that comes to mind is the Stephanie Plum series by Janet Ivanovich. Um, I'm not so sure that this would be true anymore. I've read somewhere around 15 of the 30-ish books, and I don't love them like I once did with the first four or five books. Um, maybe a more accurate one now would be the Friend Zone series by Abby Jimenez. I have loved all three books so far and I'm hoping there will be more which is rare for me when it comes to series so that's a good thing. Number three is a book everyone loved but you didn't. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Yeah. Everyone told me this was an amazing book. <laughs> Everyone told me how much uh, they loved it. I didn't. But I really, really wanted to. And I know others who didn't like it either. Uh, we were group reading this <laughs> together. And I think there were several of us who didn't get along with it. Number four is a book you read the fastest. So this might be an odd answer, but it's true. And I'm going to say Drums of Autumn by Diana Gabaldon. It's the fourth book in the Outlander series. And if you know this series, you know that all of the books are like 10,000 pages long. <laughs> well, when I was in university, so this is a while ago, I went into the bookstore and randomly picked up a book um, because I was drawn to, hi buddy, I was drawn to the cover. So I, I started reading it when I got home and I didn't stop for two days. I devoured this book. So to read such a big book so quickly is not something that I would normally do. Um, I don't remember eating or sleeping, although I must have. Um, I just remember being immersed in the book and that world. And then I found out that it was a series and that it was the fourth book. And I was, I was both upset and excited, you know, upset because I don't like reading series out of order, um, but very excited because it meant that there was still a lot more to this world to experience and to be part of. And of course, since then, there has been even more. Okay, the fifth prompt is a book that deserves more hype. Uh, again, I have two books that popped into my head. Um, the first is The Honk and Holler Opening Soon by Billy Letts. I loved this book and all of its quirky characters. If you watched my July wrap up, you know that I read uh, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe by Fanny Flagg. And I found it to be a disappointing book read for me. But the story in it is so incredible. Well, The Honk and Holler opening soon is everything that 
I wanted fried green tomatoes to be um, as a reading experience. And I don't think that I've ever heard anyone else talk about the Honkin' Holler. The other one that I thought of is The Signature of All Things by Elizabeth Gilbert. Uh, Elizabeth Gilbert is also the author of Eat, Pray, Love, and of course that book has had all the hype. Um, and I, I think uh, that The Signature of All Things is brilliant, and I would love to see it get more love or be adapted to film, just saying. Uh, next up, oh, I just thought of another um, book that totally deserves more hype, and that is Daughters of the Deer by Danielle Daniel, a Canadian author. This book was so beautifully written. This is an Indigenous story, a Canadian story. It is sad and hopeful, and I loved everything about it. Um, so it definitely deserves more hype as well. Okay, next up for real this time. Uh, this is going to end up turning into a list of books that need more hype. So uh, number, what we got here? Six. A book that is becoming a movie uh, or TV show. Uh, well, I just found out that The Color Purple is coming out as a movie in December, and it will be a musical. And I'm interested in this uh, because my confession is that I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of the book by Alice Walker. It's, it's written in letters and it just didn't grab me the way the story grabs me. It's kind of like fried green, uh, fried green tomatoes. The story is so good, but how it is told loses the story for me. So I have seen the movie The Color Purple with Oprah Winfrey. I have seen it as a stage play in New York, which I think was the most powerful. Um, and of course, I've read the book. So I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how they adapt it to a musical movie. At number seven, a book you have reread the most. Uh, Anne of Green Gables by Lucy Maud Montgomery. Uh, I, you all know I love Anne. And even though I have read the first book multiple times, I have never still read the entire series. Uh, so I'm still working on that. It's uh, a Canadian classic, and I, I really need to, to get to that soon. Number eight is a book from a genre you don't typically read. I don't typically read horror, but there are times that I do enjoy a good horror book. So for this, I'm going to recommend, it's a toss up because I have two books in mind. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to tell you about both. Uh, one is Bunny by Mona Awad. It is a strange and weird and funny story and you will never look at bunnies the same way again. Um, the other is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. This book is intense. It also has a really cool cover. Um, Prompt nine, I think we're at nine, a book that deserves all the hype it gets. Um, so I'm going to go with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. It's another book that I adored and it was everywhere for a while. Um, I recommended this one a lot uh, as well and, and I hope that everyone who reads it enjoys it even half as much as I did. This one has definitely stayed with me. Number 10 is a book you usually recommend when asked to give a recommendation. Uh, so this always depends on who is asking, you know, for the recommendation and what their tastes are. But recently I have been recommending, and you probably, this will, won't be a surprise, I've been recommending Kevin Wilson's books, uh, Now Is Not the Time to Panic and Nothing to See Here. I thought both were fantastic and I can't wait to read more of his books. Eleven is a book that has your favorite character or characters. This is another hard one because there are so many great characters out there. Uh, maybe, maybe I will go with a favorite cast of characters. I'm looking at my books to see. Um, I have several choices for a cast of characters. I think the one I'm going to choose 
is Bear Town by Frederick Backman. This is the first of a trilogy, and I feel like I really know this town and the people in the community. Um, Backman's world building is incredible, and each of his characters are so distinct, and many of them will remain in my heart for a long, long time. We are on number 12, I think. Um, this is a book you wish you could live in. I don't think that I've ever wished this. I get the sentiment. I think for this, I'm, I might be cheating a bit. I, I'm going to go nonfiction. Um, I'm going to choose Pilgrim at Tinker Creek by Annie Dillard. The nature writing in this is exceptional. And as someone who enjoys being in nature and appreciates nature, I think that I think that I would enjoy spending a, a bit of time at Tinker Creek. Okay, number 13 is a book you thought you would hate, uh, but ended up loving. Well, I, I don't think I ever go into a book thinking I'm going to hate it. Um, if I thought that, then I probably just wouldn't read the book. Um, but there have been times where I have been so surprised. And the book that I have to recommend for this uh, is Middlesex by Jeffrey Eugenides. I had attempted to read it twice before. And when I finally got to it again last year, I loved this book. I thought it was a book ahead of its time. I thought it was so well written. And it ended up being one of my top books of the year after, you know, sitting on my shelf for decades. Yeah. Uh, number 14. A book that made you cry. I am not a big crier. But the book that I always save for this question is She's Come Undone by Wally Lamb. I have mentioned this book many times. Because uh, once again, I was in university. And I was reading this book on the city bus. And I may have shed a tear or two. I think that if I were to read it again, that I probably wouldn't cry. But at the time, it definitely had an impact on me. Uh, the more recent book that had a powerful emotional impact would be A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Uh, that book rips your heart out and it's so good. It's so good. Uh, the final prompt is a book you wish you could read for the first time. For this, I often say The Red Tent by Anita Diamant, uh, another one of my all-time faves. Um, and it's true that this book drew me in. I loved every moment of it. It made me see scripture and women in scripture in particular in a whole different way. But I think the other reason why I loved this reading experience uh, so much is that I read it on a road trip to Canada's East Coast with my dad. And I had about probably at least eight books with me. And while he did the driving, I would read. And the cool thing was that my dad and I just enjoyed each other's company like that. If he if I got excited about uh, what I was reading, you know, he was excited for me and, <laughs> and took pleasure in the fact that I was, you know, reading a good books. So yes, I would I think I would love to have the whole reading experience of my dad driving while I'm in the passenger seat uh, reading a really good book. So on that note, uh, these are all of the prompts for the book recommendation tag. Thanks again to Steph for creating the tag and to Juan for tagging me. I am going to tag a few people to do this tag as well. I'm going to tag Alice from Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Um, Alice and I just finished a buddy read together, which uh, was so much fun. And uh, we both enjoyed the book, which is also a bonus. Um, so I will also tag Margaret Pernard. I feel like I've been stalking Margaret a little bit. Um, Margaret's been doing, what are they called? Fireside Chats. And she's another author in the Stygian collection. Um, she's doing lots of really interesting and creative things on her channel. Um, and then I'm going to tag one more person, a newer to me booktuber, 
uh, Michael Wurtenberg. Uh, Michael is in France. I think in France. Um, and I've watched a few of his videos so far and enjoyed them. Uh, the responses to one star reviews of the books that he loves is great. And I noticed that he has a video about uh, horror books that just came out a day or two ago. Uh, so I need to get to that. Um, I think that he would have recommendations that I've never heard of. Um, so if you don't already follow these channels, then uh, I will definitely leave those links below so you can go and give them some booktube love. And if I haven't tagged you and you want to give this a go, please do and let me know so that I can uh, watch your video and get even more recommendations. Please let me know what books you would recommend for the different prompts. I look forward to chatting with you in the comments. Thanks again for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and don't forget to make every day an adventure. Mm -hmm.